As a society, we are all connected. Ten years ago, the latest cell phones boasted monochromatic screens with bulky antennas and clunky rubber buttons. Today, most cell phones implement rich touchscreen displays that show the status updates of all your friends on Facebook. Computers ten years ago were vastly different as well. CRT displays evolved into full high-definition LCD screens, and the tower CPU slowly faded away over time. Now, we see the emergence of AMO LED screens, allowing digital monitors to be incorporated even onto paper. This evolution of technology brought about the common use of the internet and its full integration into our society. The invention of the World Wide Web is regarded as one of the most significant and important moments in recent human history. Sir Tim Berners-Lee receives credit for such an undertaking on the historic day of December 25th, 1990. Because of this, we are permanently connected to everyone around us. The 2000s will always be known as the Information Era a time where our technology drastically developed into what it is today. We saw the rise of social networking sites such as Zanga, MySpace, and Facebook. While Zanga and MySpace both came into and went out of style, Facebook has remained the main social networking site that connects friends, old and new. Launched on February 4, 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook was only open to students at Harvard University. Now, over 400 million people use Facebook worldwide, and it is ranked as the second most visited site on the internet, behind the supergiant Google. While it has been used to help people remain close to each other, it has brought around issues of privacy and movements in social interaction. People no longer call each other to say hello, but the norm now is to check a friend's Facebook status or to use Facebook chat. With social networking sites being integrated into every electronic device, people are always within one touch on a phone away. If you go outside and walk down the sidewalk, look at the cars that drive by and the people around you that walk by. Most likely, the majority of people you see will be talking on the phone, texting, or simply reading a message on their electronic device. Gone are the days of meeting new people at bus stops and small talking away into friendship. Now, we simply text a relationship into existence. But have social networking sites changed the way we communicate for the better, or for the worse? The internet inherently gives a false sense of security for whoever uses it. It is a veil between any given two people who are communicating. For example, a mature teenager may not act aggressively when with friends. However, when he or she plays an online game, expletives and hurtful dialogue may come from the teenager. The internet allows for people to act unlike themselves, allowing for a different personality to emerge. This practice may inevitably follow one into real life and social interactions that do not take place with the internet. The advancement of technology has allowed us to sync devices together, organize calendars, store contact information for friends and family, and to drive along through unfamiliar roads with the aid of a GPS. Many say that the information era has led us to a mass addiction to technology and information overload. Just as in those Microsoft Bing commercials, people are swamped with knowledge and information. For once we thrive for knowledge, now we drown in it. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia for everyone, started out with only a handful of articles, and now prides over a whopping three and a quarter million articles. And that is only from the English language. Google started up a mere 12 years ago, and in those 12 years has become a multinational cloud computing and search technologies corporation, and is the most visited website on a day-to-day -day basis. Google initially started up as a homegrown company by Lawrence Page and Sergey Brin and in little more than a decade accomplished entering multiple markets, most recently the mobile platform. Their mobile operating system, Android, is a prime contender for Apple's iPhone OS, the operating system used on a product that changed how we communicate forever. 
The introduction of the iPhone in 2007 was the original impetus for technological reform in how people stay connected, organized, and entertained. Analysts in the technological field state that the iPad will once again revolutionize the way media will be taken in, although it may take a while for it to catch on. Paperback books have evolved into digital books, being read on by the Apple iPad, Amazon Kindle, and the Barnes Noble Nook. Photo albums have been replaced with the digital web sharing sites mediums such as iPhoto, Windows Photo Gallery, Flickr, and Photo Bucket. And physical maps are no longer needed with the introduction of Google Maps and Google Earth. Andy Rooney of CBS's 60 Minutes compared the differences between a heartfelt, handwritten letter to a typed email. There's something special about a letter. We all like to get one. An email, on the other hand, has all the charm of a freight train. While technology has closed the gaps in society and allowed people to come together, we are not as close as we think we are. The internet gives us the false sense of closeness. On Facebook, people boast the hundreds of friends they have, while they only talk to about 20 of those regularly. Technology has not hindered people's social skills, but transformed them into what we have today, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The internet has just revolutionized the way we interact with others around us, a vast departure from the cultural norm of the past. But we must make sure that this departure does not lead us to depending on technology too much, or it will be the inevitable downfall of how we function and interact with others on an everyday basis.